Motherfuckers run from DPs, cause I ain't never ran from DPs. And Lupe can tell you that. But guess what? At the end of the day, cub, everything gonna see all right. Crip Mac is what everyone's talking about right now after he went viral, but a lot of people don't actually know what the dude's deal is or why he blew up out of nowhere. While he has released a few rap tracks, that's not what most people know him for. That being said, he did a Cardi B diss track back in the day that people talked about. A lot of folks seen clips of him, which basically have turned into memes. As a result, people only really know him for his over-the-top character. However, he's a lot more than just a goofy guy on the internet. But there's a darker side to Crip Mac's life, which Wack 100 had a big part in bringing to light. See, Crip Mac got hit with a DP, which is a gang punishment, and Wack laid out exactly what happened. Before we can really learn anything about who Crip Mac is and why he's all over the place, we have to get into two people. One of these two people is Adam 22 of No Jumper. So Adam 22 brought Crip Mac on because he could see that the dude was attracting views and that people are into his quirky character that he represented. He did entire podcast with the dude asking him what was up to and what he did in his daily life all that kind of stuff a lot of people would argue that adam 22 is one of the main reasons that crip mac went viral in the first place and that he was a major part of that we all know what no jumpers about so i'm not going to get majorly into that what i will explain though is who andrew callaghan is because he's not really part of the hip-hop industry and you could also argue he introduced crip mac to the general public for those of you who don't know crip mac was recently featured on a segment for channel 5 a YouTube channel founded by the former host of All Gas No Breaks. Andrew quit his job back in the day before deciding he was going to go on a road trip where All Gas No Breaks was filmed. Channel 5 has been releasing content since about spring of 2021 and they're still going strong. Usual suspects of the channel are niche subcultures like pickup artists or people like Chet Hanks, son of Tom Hanks, who coined the phrase white boy summer. You can see where this is going. It's usually eccentric, controversial, offbeat people. Falling right into that group is none other than Crip Mac. In November of 2018, the boys came across Crip Mac, a man who lives in LA, as well as a member of the 55th Street Crips. This video is one of their most viewed to date, with over 4 million views. As previously mentioned, Crip Mac is a bit of an odd dude. It's mostly in his mannerisms. First of all, he's a Crip, so he doesn't use the letter B when he talks. Like, ever. Then there's Crip Mac's appearance. He's got a huge tattoo across his forehead which says Hoover Killer, referring to some nearby ops. He also has the name of an ex under his left eyelid, a big five on his left cheek, and what looks like a falcon's tattoo on the other side. He also has two fives shaved into his head. Aside from the whole B thing, he has a habit of replacing every number with the number five in reference to 55th Street. He also has a catchphrase, which he delivers the same every time, saying, I'm gonna keep it 55th Street. While there's definitely some wackiness that comes along with Crip Mac, there's also a really genuine side of him too, although you probably wouldn't notice it at first glance. While Andrew is interviewing Crip Mac, an older 55th Street Crip comes walking down the alley. Andrew asks him about Crip Mac, and he responds by explaining that Crip Mac is actually a really good dude. He helps people out in the neighborhood when they're going through hard times. He's a beautiful person. He's a beautiful person. He's always helping me. Crip Mac also explains that just because he's a gang member doesn't mean that he's also a bad person. He just fell into it as so many other people do. He cares about his community. That being said, any kind of gang affiliation can get you into trouble, and Wack gets into that later on. For a lot of the video, Crip Mac also takes Andrew over to some tables where he helps serve free pizza to the homeless and others who are down on their luck. He directs another man to some free tacos. Tacos over there! Get you some free tacos! Crip Mac explains that according to him, nobody's better than nobody. He comes out here every Sunday to help with the whole thing. There's also a team of young kids showing up to help serve their community, and honestly, it's great to see. Apparently every Sunday, they pull 50 to 100 people in to be served. Crip Mac also explains that he is, in fact, crazy and that it's not an act. A lot of people on the internet have claimed that Crip Mac is schizophrenic, although there's no way to know what his specific diagnosis is. That's why what happens later is so much more tragic. If Crip Mac does suffer from mental illness, what happened to him really isn't fair. From here on out in the episode, Andrew takes Crip Mac to a Slipknot show where he hangs out, has a good time, and interviews a few people himself. That's essentially where this part of the story ends, but the most heartbreaking part is to come. Shortly after this episode of Channel 5 aired, it seems like tons more people started paying attention to Crip Mac, and that might not have worked out the way Andrew intended. With the bigger profile, there are always going to be more haters, 
and more demons from the past catching up with you. That's exactly what led to the DP happening. What did people think about Crip Map when the episode dropped? Well, one fan on Twitter said, Whenever I'm having a suicidal episode, I'll think of Crip Mac from the Channel 5 video. I think it helps a little. Another fan on YouTube said, I see in his eyes that he really does have a good heart. He's passionate about life and it's sad knowing he could be snuffed out at any time due to gangbanging shit. I'm sure he's made mistakes, but he's clearly had a great capacity for empathy. And that's very good quality. Ever since Crip Mac was featured, his profile has only risen. We should also bring up that Crip Mac has also been featured a few times on No Jumper, but those episodes didn't quite pull as much attention as the Channel 5 episode. No Jumper is also the first place this whole part of the story broke. No Jumper recently shared a video of Crip Mac that he had posted without much context, showing himself sitting in a car bruised up with cuts on his face. When the story initially broke, everyone thought that maybe since Crip Mac had just blown up and everything, some ops were jealous and didn't like that he was going viral, so they decided to jump the dude. That wasn't the case. WAC 100 recently talked about the whole situation, explaining that Crip Mac didn't just get jumped, he got a DP. That means that a bunch of other members from the 55th Street Crips ganged up on Mac and delivered a beatdown. That got everybody activated. It's on my PTR. Hey, bro, listen to me. Don't kill the messenger. Me. Hey, look, bro, a put off a hood, he ain't driving, bro. That's out. Nigga, you are going to get, you going to be, somebody going to find you laid up over there, bro, moaning. Y'all want to know what happened or what, man? What happened? Let them know. Yeah. The reason for the whole situation is that way back in the day, Crip Mac had made a post claiming another set. Since there aren't really any other high-profile members of the 55th Street Crips, he became a target for something like that. According to Mac, he was just trying to get ahead of the situation and jump the gun by going to talk to everyone in person. Now, the whole thing is more of a punishment than anything else. It sucks to go through, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. In a later interview on No Jumper, Adam22 asked if he'd feel responsible if something were to actually happen to Crip Mac. He said that it would bother him, but he also said he only feels responsible for the positives that would happen to Crip Mac. He says that everything bad coming his way was coming his way already. But for real though, how can that be the case? The dude interviewing was basically telling him that the internet is a powerful thing. And that's true. You can't just take credit for the good like that. <laughs> no, I'm, if he dies today, are you going to feel responsible for his death? No. Created I didn't tell him to tattoo that shit monster. on his head. No, 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 no. You created no, no, a monster. No, no. Absolutely not. Crazy. Because the internet is a powerful thing. A pow it's a monster. Responsible for a lot of the good that has entered his life over the last year in the sense that I put him in a position to be way more well known, to make a lot more money. Now, what he does with that is up to him. With that, something did happen to Crip Mac. Reports are breaking just now that Crip Mac has been arrested. Adam22 took to his Instagram to announce that allegedly Crip Mac just got picked up by the police in possession of a weapon. And as of right now, he's got an ankle monitor on. This is why the question is still important. Does Adam22 have anything to do with this? What if someone was jealous and called on Crip Mac? What's going on here? Unfortunately, these questions will have to go unanswered for now, but we can peep Twitter to see what's going on. All across the board from Twitter to Adam22, everyone's screaming, free Crip Mac. But what do y'all think on this? Is Crip Mac just dealing with the consequences of his actions? Or would any of this even have happened if it weren't for people like WAC100, Adam22, or Andrew Callaghan? Let us know what you think down in the comments. Oh, and if you like this one, you should for sure peep this next video.